Last year, I announced that I was canceling work on my first game, until about a month later when you guys talked me out of it, so I decided to start working on it again. But ever since then, I haven't really mentioned it, like, at all. But now, one year later, I finally have some new stuff to show off, like costumes, animations, music, and even the character's face. Yeah, my character didn't really have a face before, but now he does. And you can also own this face because I've got my own plushie now. It was kind of difficult to try and replicate the low-poly look of my character and turn it into a plush because they said it would end up rounding out. But the people at Makeshift actually managed to make a design that imitates the head shape pretty well. And if you notice, he is also holding a trophy and wearing a gold medal, but that'll make more sense when we start talking about the new animations in the game. So if you want to help support me or the development of the game, or if you just want something that's kind of like exclusive merch for the game before it even gets released, this is probably the best way. But these plushies are only going to be available for the next 20 days or so. After that, they'll be gone. So, uh, buy now or something. One of the main things I've been working on in the last year is costumes. A lot of games nowadays have different costumes and accessories that you can equip on your character, mainly because it's fun. People, including myself, like changing up their character, and I wanted to have a lot of options for players to choose from. I don't know if I've talked about this before, but I had previously made this character selection menu where you would add or drop players and change their outfits. At first I thought of having costumes that could be broken up into separate pieces like an item for the head, for the torso, and for the legs. I started thinking up some ideas and opened up Blender to start making them, and who am I kidding? I have no idea how to do 3D modeling. All I know how to do is use Magic of Voxel and place blocks like I'm playing Minecraft. I don't know how to use Blender. The only thing I've ever made in Blender is my character, and that was only after following the tutorial of how to make a low poly character in 10 minutes. So instead, what I started doing is looking to hire someone to be the 3D artist for the game. I put up a request for a 3D modeler on my YouTube community tab like I was some sort of NPC looking for an adventurer to fight off a couple of monsters, and I slowly started getting some applications. I looked through a lot of different applications from a lot of people in the community, and a lot of you guys were really talented. But ultimately, I had to choose one, and I ended up going with someone named Rodrigo. I thought his work seemed really good, and the fact that he was the only one one who applied that could also do animation was a huge plus. I realized that I would also need an animator at some point, so having someone who could do both was perfect. If you want to check out some of his other work, I'll leave a link to his Instagram. After we started working together, the first thing we did was add the new face to the character. The only thing that I had before were these two big spheres that were stretched to be ovals and placed into the face. But Rodrigo was able to add eyebrows and the big bean-shaped mouth that was shown in all of the artwork for the game so far. And next came the creation of the costumes. I wanted to have enough costumes to have a lot of variety, but I also didn't want to spend a lot of money just making costumes. So I thought that having 30 different costumes was a good number. And as we were working on costume ideas, we eventually decided against separating the costume into separate parts like I initially thought of before. At first, I had liked the idea of being able to mix and match costumes, so someone could be wearing an astronaut helmet, but wearing a swimsuit instead of a spacesuit. But as we started playing out ideas for the victory animations, we felt like some of the animations wouldn't really make a whole lot of sense without the proper costume. So in the end, we decided on doing costumes as whole pieces, and it would be one victory animation linked to one costume. As for the actual creation of the costumes, I have to give a lot of credit to Rodrigo here because he basically carried a lot of the work. I tried to think of as many ideas as I could and try to give descriptions of the costumes as best as I could, and Rodrigo would send me back a finished costume that same day. Sometimes he would even get two costumes done in a single day, and a lot of my descriptions weren't even that good. He just had some good sense of what I was thinking though. And here's the final list of costumes that are going to be in the game. We've got the gentleman, the farmer, construction worker, the astronaut, two different variations of the beachgoer, the aviator pilot, the scientist, the nurse, the firefighter, the police officer, pirate captain, the ninja, the baby, the wizard, the pizza delivery driver, the viking, the chef, the caveman, the boxer, the American football player, the cheerleader, the dinosaur, the bee costume, the prisoner, the navy officer, the plague doctor, the knight, the robot, and the angel. And I know I just rushed through a lot, but I'll be talking more about them in a bit when I show off some of the animations. Although one thing that I will mention is that there are some recurring elements between the costumes, like this minimalistic logo of the character's face. You can see it on a couple different costumes like the beachgoer, astronaut, and the pizza delivery driver. I also thought of some ideas for some holiday event outfits for Halloween and Christmas, and we haven't actually done any of these yet, but we might start working on them after the game actually releases. And by now, you're probably getting worried that there's going to be tons of microtransactions and paid DLCs as the way of gaming is nowadays. But I'm planning on keeping all of the event DLC costumes free. The way costumes will be unlocked in the game is by spending coins or some similar currency at the in-game shop. And I don't plan on having microtransactions for extra coins, because that's not something that I personally would buy. And with that out of the way, I think it's time to move on to the animation. The animations took much longer, and a lot more work went into them than just the costume. Like I said before, I wanted to have one victory animation for each costume, which means that we needed to have 30 different animations, plus one for the people who like to play as the default skin that the game gives you. On top of that, we also needed to make an animation for the players who came in second and third place. So in total, we needed to make 33 short animations, which is a lot of work. Compared to the one costume per day rate that Rodrigo was working at, these animations took a lot longer. On average, he was able to do five animations in about a month, and we still don't actually have them all finished. 
We're still working on the last 10 or so by the time this video comes out, so I'll only be able to show off some of the animations so far in this video. But before we got started on that, the first thing we had to do was create a set for the animations to take place on. We designed the set after the artwork that I've already shown in the past. We made the podiums for the characters to stand on, the platform flying in the sky, and some clouds surrounding it. The final stage might change, but this is generally what it's going to look like. Next, we needed to know how we were going to frame the animation. The two options that I thought of were a close-up of the character who wins, similar to Super Smash Bros, and another that's further away, but shows all three players in frame, similar to Crash Team Racing. At first, we tried doing a few animations in the Smash Bros style, but we stopped after the second animation. The first animation that we did with the default skin worked pretty well. The character waves the trophy around and amps up the imaginary crowd. This is also the design that the plushie is based on, but the second animation idea didn't really work out as well as I had thought. We had the astronaut jump up onto the stage from behind and plant the flag, but something about it just fell off, and I wasn't really liking the direction these animations were going. Instead, we decided to switch it up and try and approach it with a stationary camera set further back, and after a couple of tests and revisions, we finally got something that we both liked. And if you're looking at these animations and thinking that they look weird, that's mainly because of the lighting. When Rodrigo sent these over to me, he didn't render them with lighting, so everything looks wrong. But usually before he does an animation, he sends me a rendered picture of the stage and all the props to show me what it'll look like when it's rendered properly. And I usually like looking at these images because I think it makes them look really professional. The third animation we worked on was one of the beachgoers. You can see them just casually reading a book on the beach and ending off by waving to the camera. And some of these animations will follow this structure where there will be a final action at the end like the waving. This is because we were originally planning to have the close-up cam do a slow motion part where they would perform that final action. But instead we did a far away cam where the animation is looped, so some of these will stop being like that. Next up was the farmer, who we had working on the crops. After finishing his hard work tending to the crops, he finishes the animation by turning around and wiping the sweat off his forehead. The next one is the gentleman, who we had sitting at a table sipping on a cup of tea. For this one, we added a little smoke effect onto his cup of tea for a little extra effect. The aviator pilot is definitely one of the hardest ones that we had to do, and I ended up really testing out Rodrigo's skills here. I had the idea of having him run around like he was pretending to be an airplane, but then he actually takes off and does some loop-the-loops before finally stumbling on his landing. I had to try my best to draw out a path in Unity using blocks to try and show the path that I wanted him to take in the air, and in the end I think it turned out really well. The construction worker pulls out a giant jackhammer from behind him, somehow, and then proceeds to accidentally destroy the podium that he's standing on. The firefighter we had to bring into Unity to add some extra effects. We made it so that he pulls out a hose and starts putting out a fire that started on the stage. We had to make it loop, so we just made the fire randomly start up again. He puts his mask back on and starts putting out the new fire over and over again. The scientist is definitely one of my favorites. His design was based on characters like Egad from Luigi's Mansion and the Mad Scientist costume from Crash Team Racing. For his animation, we had to add some effects in Unity to make the liquid and the potions move around as he moves the bottles, and then we had to make an explosion when he mixes them together. For the explosion, I layered two different variations of it on top of each other, one being green and the other being orange, and I think the effect came out really well. And after that, we finished this first group of animations off with the other beachgoer. He's supposed to be a surfer, but he's also not the greatest as he loses his balance and falls off the board. The second set of animations that we did started off with the second and third place animations. Second place doesn't really care all that much that he didn't win, but he's also not excited about the fact that he lost. Meanwhile, third place is a little upset that he lost, which eventually turns into anger towards the winner. In this second set, we also started thinking of new animation types, starting with the nurse. We had it so that another character will be brought onto the stage, and the nurse will have to use a defibrillator to revive them. For the cop, I thought it would be funny to use the classic stereotype of the cop who slacks off and sits around eating donuts. Since the animation loops over and over again, he seems to have an infinite supply of donuts that he keeps stored in his back pocket. The pirate captain does some cool stuff that I don't even know if it's actually possible. But anyways, he strikes his sword at the ground to light his sword on fire, which he then uses to light the cannon next to him. And the last one in this set was the ninja. It starts with his tree substitution on stage, and then he pops out of the smoke to throw some shurikens before concealing himself again. The third and final set for this video starts a little different. This time we have our character roleplaying as a baby, as he stacks up some blocks and smacks them down, and for some reason this is the funniest thing he's ever seen, so he proceeds to do it again. Up next we have our champion boxer practicing for his next match while imagining the punching bag as his next opponent. He finishes the match with his signature uppercut. The next one was the viking, and we wanted this one to be epic. We brought one of the losing characters onto the stage while the viking sits on his throne and drinks out of his horn while throwing his axe at the target behind him. Next is the chef, who has his kitchen behind him and he prepares a meal to show off. We made it so that each time he presents a dish at the end of the animation, it will randomly select one of five different dishes, one of which is a really gross failed dish that he made. One of the last ones we worked on is the caveman, who is just going about his business until lightning strikes and startles him. As he stumbles his way over to discovering fire, he decides to stomp it out and resume whatever it was that he was doing. And the last one that we have to show off for now is the breakdancing pizza boy. We had him playing with the pizza box like some sort of professional science spinner, and was definitely inspired by this guy who I saw in Austin's talent show on Twitch. 
And that was the last of the animations that we have finished. But we do have the next few scenarios set up being ready to be animated, like for the wizard, the American football player, the knight, the prisoner, the bee, and the navy officer. After we finish these, there are only a few more animations left, and then we'll be finished with all of them. But in the meantime, I think it's time to move on to the music. The song you're hearing right now is the main title theme for the game. I worked with Wormhole to create something really cool for the game, and I liked how this turned out. And that's about enough of that song for now. I'm worried somehow I'll get a copyright claim for my own music, but the full song will be uploaded on Wormhole's YouTube channel at the same time this video goes up, so I'll leave a link to his channel in the description as well. Now, let's jump back about 8 or 9 months ago. Similar to how I was finding a 3D artist and found Rodrigo, I posted a request to look for either a music producer or composer or whatever you might call it. I got a lot of submissions, which once again, a lot were really good. But once again in the end, I had to pick only one, and Wormhole was the one who seemed like the best fit. I really enjoyed some of the music that he submitted, like his self-titled song Wormhole, which at the time that he sent it to me wasn't even finished yet. So I started working with him on making some music, and even some new sound effects for the game. Because up until this point, the game had been completely silent. He gave me a few short samples for songs that we might use for the main theme, and we ended up building up one of them into the song that it is now. We also started working on some short jingles for the victory animations, and using one of these as a base, we started remixing that same song into different styles for a lot of different costumes, and he's really talented when it comes to this. He goes from a slow space jam for the astronaut, to a smooth jazz for the gentleman, all the way to whatever genre you might call this for the farmer. So if you want to listen to everything in full, Wormhole will have the entire first volume of the game's soundtrack on his channel, which I highly recommend you check out. And I'm just saying, he doesn't even have 200 subscribers yet, and music this good should definitely get more recognition, so yeah, check him out. As for what's next for the game, I still need to create some levels, create the power-up, make online play, and finally come up with a good title for the game so I can make a Steam page. And that's about it for this update. Check out Rodrigo, check out Wormhole, and check out my plushie. Alright, see ya.